My name is Barry Davis. I served with the Special Air Service for 18 years. For two of those years, I taught survival to fast jet pilots and special forces. The basic principles of survival are designed to keep you alive. Be it from an ill-fated camping trip or a mission deep behind enemy lines, the principles are the same. This video is designed to teach you how to escape, evade and survive. Your chances of survival are always good if you stay calm and think clearly. Within the British Army, there is a regiment of elite crack troops. Everyone knows their name. Few know their secrets. Hand-picked, highly trained, obsessively focused. Their motto, who dares wins. Their name, the SAS. The SAS was formed in 1941 by Major David Sterling as a wildcard renegade outfit with a brief to seek, destroy and disrupt the enemy forces. A highly mobile, highly trained body of soldiers. Their strengths, surprise and unpredictability. They were the forerunners of the modern day SAS, the elite fighting force revered throughout the world. The cream of the British Army, each soldier is recommended for selection. The training is rigorous the selection process exact. Few make the grade. Those that do become highly trained fighting machines with the emphasis on stamina, mental focus and imagination. But above all, the will to survive. For them, survival is life. destroy the enemy airfield at 332439 using a laser target designator. Once in position, you will contact HQ using call sign Fortune 1 and direct fire onto target. Intelligence reports that the airfield, which until now has been inactive, is being deployed to bring in heavy artillery, contrary to UN mandate. This supply line is vital to the enemy and the area is heavily patrolled. You are to avoid contact with the enemy at all costs. In the event of any contact or compromise, you are to bug out and make for the nearest UN location. In the event of capture, your cover story is that you are UN troops who are lost. The patrol will be inserted 25 kilometers behind enemy lines at 700 hours. Insertion will be by helicopter. When operating deep behind enemy lines, a soldier must remember three basic skills. Good route selection, all around observation, and the ability to move and communicate silently. Sign language is imperative, allowing simple yet essential communication between each patrol member, alerting everyone's attention in the event of any compromising situation. But above all, be prepared for any event, and you should avoid detection.
Even for the most highly trained soldier, detection by the enemy can come at any time. It is essential for the patrol commander to make sure that each member of the patrol knows the designated emergency rendezvous point. But it is down to each individual soldier to prepare and carry his own personal escape and survival equipment. Survival packages and equipment come in a variety of shapes and sizes. It is important to take only what is necessary for your individual needs. For example, if you are planning to go on a trekking expedition, you may well take a professional pack that contains all the items required to see you through any basic survival situation. An infantry soldier, however, may select a more simplified, dedicated kit, where the civilian counterpart may choose a full survival kit that has simplified visual information. However, special forces and members of the SAS will select their own survival items individually and pack it into a small tin such as this. No matter which survival kit you choose, be it a small dedicated kit or a large professional pack, you should select the individual items with care. For example, for shelter, you may choose a shelter sheet or a small polythene bag that will protect you against the weather and the elements and prevent hypothermia. A soldier would select the green one, providing camouflage. His civilian counterpart, an orange one, for easy detection by the rescue services. Using the two polythene sacks, it's easy to make an emergency sleeping bag. Again, for camouflage, use the green sack on the outside. For signaling, the orange one on the outside. Fill up the cavity between the two sacks with any natural materials to hand, such as foliage, dead leaves, bracken. Even if the material is damp, once you are inside you will be well insulated. For navigation, a range of equipment has been developed from the sophisticated GPS, the electronic global plotting system, to a simple button compass. Additionally, a soldier may carry a small escape map, which can be hidden in his clothing. One of the most essential survival requirements is the need to make fire. This can be done with a variety of simple equipment, such as a flint and steel and magnesium block. This will light approximately 4,000 fires, wet or dry. Also available are wind and waterproof matches. Once struck, they will burn for approximately 12 seconds without going out. It is also possible to use a simple magnifying glass. This requires dry tinder and direct sunlight. Signaling is also imperative for survival. And equipment for this ranges from a simple periwhistle, which is found in most life rafts and life vests, to more complicated equipment, like small hand flares, or for the military, a TACB survival radio. These are just a few of the numerous items. One of the other essential requirements for survival is water. A condom, when placed inside a sock, can be used as a water carrier capable of carrying two liters of water. You may need to purify the water. This can be done with purification tablets 
or with a portable water purifier. There are various simple tools that can be carried in your survival kit to construct shelter or catch game, such as a commando wire saw. Don't forget, a commando wire saw will convert into a very effective snare. If you need to cut, you can carry a small knife or a large, more complex one or a simple scalpel blade. For snares, you can include a length of brass wire. Make sure your survival kit is suited to the environment in which you are operating. When setting up an observation post, take great care in selecting your position. Obviously, it should command a good view of the target, but it should also provide a good cover from the enemy. at the end of the runway. Yeah. Somewhat down to the left of the uh, the tower. Yeah. We put the net up over the top here. And a sight in there. Yeah. Uh, radio set up and establish okay, comment barrier. Brew, mate. Want some scoff? Yeah, I won't mind, mate. Can do with a good brew first. Always make sure there is a good route of escape and position a sentry to protect the rear. Once the observation post is set up, it is important to make your environment comfortable. You may be there for some time. Zero Alpha, this is 32 Charlie, radio check, over. 32 uh, Charlie, yeah, you Lima Charlie to me, we're out. Okay, mate, we're ready there. Okay, we're grid 364425. Okay, mate. Uh, Zero Alpha, 32 Charlie, we are at grid 364425. Over. Okay, we've got 10 aircraft on the pan. Airfield, northern end of airfield, you have 10 aircraft on the pan. Roger so far, over. We've got two radar stations. 
3 2 Charlie. We've got two radar stations. And the tower is also clear and visible to us. And we have a tower also clear and visible to our location. LTD set up, ready to go on your command. The LTD set up and ready to go on your command. Read back. Uh, Roger Fortune 1, correct. We're out. Okay, mate, they're ready and he's the IP now. Okay, mate, that's it coming in now. Yes! Uh, that's a good contact on the target. Destroyed. We'll talk to you later. A mess. Zero Alpha, this is 32 Charlie. We have two enemy vehicles towards our location. Over. Three to Charlie, bugging out, we're bugging out, we're out.
Being captured as a prisoner of war must rank as one of the most frightening experiences a soldier can face. The immediate fear of the unknown, the fear of a severe beating or death. All of this will take a deep toll on your emotions, filling your mind with a sense of isolation and abandonment. Try to remain calm and think clearly. Interrogation is a brutal and relentless form of physical and mental torture. It is essential to focus your mind, to withstand the pressure. Stick to your cover story, focus your mind on it, start to believe it, and always look for possible avenues of escape. Tell me where your other units are. means nothing. You tell me where they are, we take him to hospital. Look, just get that fucking dog. God! Oh! <laughs> Don't get the doctor when you tell me on the map where the other units are. Don't get fuck off. Again! Oh! Look, I cannot answer that question. You will answer the question, where are the other units? Get your head up. I cannot answer oh. that Again! Oh! God, you We can do this all night until you tell me where are the other units. Get up! Again! Head up, you listen to me and you concentrate, you show me where are the other units. You are not UN units, you are murdering SAS, you kill our civilians on the airfield. I can't answer the question. You will answer, listen, you keep your head up. You will, otherwise you will die here. There's no alternative. I can't answer God! 
He gets no hospital until you tell me on the map where are the enemy units, where are your other units. Enough of these lies! Guard, grab it! The water! Look, I cannot answer your question. I can't. Not one more chance to answer! No. No, 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 no. No, please. More water! Don't! If you find yourself imprisoned in a building constructed of blocks, there are two things to look for. If the block is rough cast on the outside, it generally means that it is solid and therefore difficult to get through. However, if the block is smooth, it usually means it's of more modern construction and therefore hollow on the inside. An improvised sledgehammer will smash through that in approximately 30 minutes. Most buildings are constructed of brick. They get their strength from their bond. If we break this bond, we can break through the wall. We can do this by simply scraping away the mortar with an improvised chisel and removing the bricks. Buildings constructed of stone are usually very old and the wall very thick. Trying to break through this is very difficult. Look for easier avenues of escape, such as doors or windows. During any escape, we may encounter locks. Normally, we will open the lock with a key. What we have to do here is mimic the key with lock picks. I'll now explain how this is done. For this particular lock, I'm going to choose a tension tool, a pick, and a rake. The first thing I'm going to do is place the tension bar into the keyhole in the tumbler. This acts as the main body of the key. Next, 